the Western ideological system, and not only the Western, I mean whether, of course, communism is not really existing anymore, except perhaps in China. But it has been a prevalent ideology in the West, and then by necessity, not only in the West, but this has been hoisted upon the rest of humanity, because without doubt, as we know, the West controls the mass media. The West has the most influential say in the ideologies that are prevalent in the world. So this is their ideology. Men and women are the same. And the reason, as they have been claiming, that boys like to play with guns and cars, and they like mechanical things, is because that's the way we've been brought up. Our parents indoctrinate us. Boys wear blue, boys play with cars, boys like guns. And girls, they wear pink, and they play with dolls, you know, and they like makeup and earrings and stuff like that, because they've been conditioned to be like that. So this is what they have been saying. In fact, there's no reason why girls shouldn't play with guns and, and cars and wear blue, and there's no reason why boys shouldn't wear earrings. <laughs> well, I mean, so these days... Uh, they shouldn't wear earrings and wear pink, okay, and play with dolls. There's no reason. Now, interestingly enough, believe it or not, in Israel, or we should call it occupied Palestine, they have been conducting for many years now, for the past 40 years, there has been a famous kibbutz experiment, an experiment on a kibbutz. Now, in this kibbutz, what they did is they separated as much as possible from the earliest possible age. They separated children from their parents. And the reason they did that is because they did not want their parents to influence the children in their habits and their behavior. In other words, what they were attempting to do was to eliminate the nurture side. Eliminate nurture and let their nature come forward. And what they thought and what they believed, and this was their ideology, is that children would not care what toys they played with. And this is what they did. They left these children in dormitories. On their own as much as possible. And in the dormitories they put toy guns, toy cars, Mechano sets, dolls, makeup, jewelry, so on and so forth. And they thought that what would be proven from this experiment that went on for 40 years is that they, would, they wouldn't care. The boys would be as, just as happy playing with dolls as the girls. And the girls would be just as happy as playing with cars and, and, and guns as the boys. But what did they actually discover after 40 years of experimentation? Consistently, time after time after time, the boys would take the toys that were guns and cars and mechanical things. And the girls would take the dolls and take the makeup and, all the, and the jewelry. This is what they discovered. 40 years they did this experiment. And in fact, they've been experimenting with humanity. They've been experimenting with society on a massive scale. They have been trying to indoctrinate us for years and years under the guise of what they call feminism, the same ideology. And what they have discovered now, scientifically they have proven that boys and girls are different. From the very earliest age, and they have done controlled scientific experiments that have been reviewed by peer groups and confirmed again and again, that boys look at certain things and certain toys and they concentrate them from birth. From, as, from the moment they can start seeing, they concentrate on certain things that are of a mechanical nature. And girls, they concentrate on things that are what they call the girly things. And so there's no possibility for these babies to be subjected to some type of brainwashing by society. In other words, it's biological. It's inbuilt into us. 
It's our nature. Men and women are different. That is the fact. It's in our biology. It's in our very makeup. Now, let us read something that has been mentioned by a French Nobel laureate. His name is Alex Camel. And this is what he said. The difference between men and women are of more fundamental nature than is usually realized. And that these differences are caused by the very structure of the tissue and by the impregnation of the entire organism with specific chemical substances secreted by the ovary. Ignorance of these fundamental facts has led promoters of feminism to believe that both sexes should have the same responsibilities. In reality, women differs profoundly from man. Every one of the cells of her body bears the mark of her sex. The same is true of her organs and above all of her nervous system. Women should develop their aptitudes without imitating the males. This is what this French scientist said. But of course, that is not what we are taught even today. And of course, this exposes the lie of the claim of the Western world to be motivated by science. Because we do not find them promoting this ideology that has now been proven by science. Rather, they still continue to promote the misguided notion that men and women are the same. That both men and women should be able to work. That both men and women should be able to do the same things and should be encouraged to. And they claim this under the banner of noble ideals. But the facts are, brothers and sisters, rather more mundane than that. We imagine that something that we have, I have uh, noticed in The Economist, it's the famous magazine in, in England, an economist, an article in The Economist called The Liberation of Women in the West, one of the most enduring revolutions of the 20th century, produced by Western Europe. This is what they've claimed about it. But in fact, when we examine the reality of it, the reasons for their pr promoting this feminism, as I said, is much more mundane. It's actually mostly to do with economics. They theorize that if you have half the population of your country staying at home, not being employed, then what you have done is you have not utilized half the economic potential of your society. In other words, if the only ones who are working are men, then men are the ones who work, men are the ones who control the money, and men are the ones who essentially will spend the money. If we get the women working, that means we will have more disposable income, more people buying, more people spending, and our economy will increase. This is what they imagined. This is what they imagined. And it seems to make some sort of sense, doesn't it? If we look at the origins of this, it started in the First World War. In the First World War, when lots of men were going out and getting slaughtered in their millions in the battlefields in France, and also in the Second World War, the women were forced to go to the factories to produce munitions. And then they got a taste of liberation. And once they got a taste of liberation, as they called it, and they started having their own incomes, they didn't want to go back to the old ways of being chained to the kitchen sink, as they called it. And it seemed that, for a time, it was working. Wealth increased, expenditure increased, the economy went forward. But now, amazingly, economists have come across 
a new reality that they've only just woken up to quite recently. This is quite interesting. They've realized that once a certain percentage of your population reaches over 65, and in fact it's around 30%, so if 30% of your population is over 65 years old, what they discovered is the economy of your country becomes not viable anymore. In, in other words, the economy won't work. Why? Because the money you need to spend to care for the over 65s is more than the money that those people who are earning and working can generate. And it's nothing to do with they care about old people, now they want to introduce new laws to let people work till they're 75. It's nothing to do with their caring about old people. They started to realize that they're getting an increasing aging population and they're not going to be able to sustain the economy. And now having told women that you should leave the home, liberate yourself from your husband, liberate yourself from that kitchen sink, what do you want to have kids for anyway? Waste your time with that. Go out and earn some money. Now they're trying to get them to get back in the home, back to the kitchen sink and having babies again. Because there's not enough young people in society. And of course, what is this proving is the complete nonsense of those people who try to live their lives according to the feeble opinions and ideologies imagined in the minds of human beings. And when they abandon the perfect guidance of Allah, they will only end up destroying themselves. In fact, what we find is that Western society is the society that oppresses women. Because the nature of the woman is to be a mother. The nature of the woman is to be caring for children. The nature of the woman, her whole biology, her whole chemistry, her nervous system, her mental system is all constructed. Whether you believe in Allah or you believe in evolution, it's not something you can argue about. Either Allah has created women like that, or evolution over millions of years has made women like that. To be the ones that bear the children, that carry them, that give birth to them, that, that feed them, that, that, that care for them, that nurture them. And believe me, the one who is most capable of doing it is the woman. The man can have a go, and maybe he has to do that sometimes. But the reality is, as every single one of us who have got kids here, we know the reality. We know the reality of who can really look after the women, uh, look after the children. We know that. And us men know it's not us. We could do it for a day, or maybe half a day, and if we do it for a day, then we say, Phew, now I know what my wife has to put up with every day, and I don't know how she does it. You know, that's the reality. Because that's the way Allah made us. So what do we find? We find as usual, and it's not surprising, we shouldn't go, oh that's amazing, because you know what, it's not really that amazing. If we are believers in Allah, and we believe in Islam, and we believe Islam is from Allah, we would expect that what Allah teaches us is to be in agreement with what has been scientifically proven. And of course, the Qur'an confirms this reality. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the wife of Imran who dedicated her child, who is of course Maryam, to the, worship, the temple, to, the, to, the, the, to, the, to be a priest in the temple. But of course when she gave birth to Maryam, she said, I have given birth to a female child. And Allah knows very well what she had given birth to. The male is not like the female. The male is not like the female. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us. Brothers and sisters, dear guests, the male is not like the female. Science tells us, reason tells us, experience tells us, and Allah reminds us. Men and women are different. 
So it is the society that oppresses women is a society that takes women away from their nature. 